Okay. Dateline on this is, ah, uh, geez, July 22? Somewhere in there. So we are uh, three quarters of the way through the month. The other one was kind of a beginning video. As we do, we try to document the garden. We have had alternating rain and sunshine for weeks now, and the results are obvious. Look what we finally got. Yes, it's a trombocino, and it's not the only one. There, I managed to sprout the plants, and I managed to get them growing. And we also have the first of these just coming in. There's cucumbers in there, if you can see them. They're wilting because I haven't watered them. I was so busy yesterday, so I'm about to do so now. And we've also gotten these, and there's more to pick. That's summer squash. Oh, that stuff is so yummy. And we're doing well, very well with this, of which we have three buckets of. That is Swiss chard. Keep picking that. So we're getting garden goodies. Yeah, as of yet, however, not sure how any of this is going to do. The bean wall, not so good last year, but last year was a real drought year and it killed a lot of things. So I've got some growing in the pots, which did, would not grow at all years before, and some growing in the ground where it did actually grow last year, but not very much. There's a row in the garden here that has nothing in it because my back really went out at the beginning of the season. I thought I'd cut back. Yeah, I really cut back, huh? Well, to an amount. There's a lot of rows that aren't don't have stuff in them, and this has nothing in it. But it will. I just planted a fall crop of these bush beans. Not as many as this, but some. And where I'm going today, I might consider the idea, say, oh, today, tomorrow going, of getting a packet of these snow peas for a fall crop of those. If it's that kind of a year, might as well make it stellar. And here, all along this, this, is, this used to be, in past years, this looked like the wall of um, glory, morning glories. But guess what's taken over? I may have to clip this stuff out. It's um, blackberries. I put some netting over it to see if I could get some, and I did get a couple, but they're almost impossible to pick through the netting. And the birds are real get it, good at getting them. So, I don't know. I'm considering the idea of just cutting them down and let the morning glories get in there. I wish they could coexist, but as you can see, they fight. They're, they're mostly covering up that wall and keeping the morning glories from getting there. So, I don't know how well that's going to work out, really. And I'll show you how desperate the morning glories are. They're, they're now attacking this bush here, which I don't even know what it is. I think in the past it has these flowers that look a little bit like marigolds, but boy, and they aren't marigolds, but they stink. <laughs> and I don't know if they're any good for keeping bugs out. So, going down some of the rows here, I have planted more squash down these rows. I haven't gotten anything much from these rows yet. Here is cucumbers planted later from seed and uh, nothing coming in from that either. The plantlets are the ones that are giving cucumbers at the moment. This is a bunch of uh, Brussels sprouts uh, and you know what? It sure looks like Oh, I think I know how he did. I yeah, I think the yep, the the uh somewhere around here there's going to be a hole because I think the chuck is in. Cuz if you look at the center of this, which is the part they like to eat, he got it. And he got this one too, but if you'll notice the cage side is out. So I think he probably pushed in there and got that. Surprised he didn't get this one, but it can be random. He didn't get this one because it's pushed in the top. This was eat, being eaten by bugs. And this one he couldn't get into either. So, I don't know. He's around, and you can't trap him. He, he's too smart for the trap. He's learned. He's been here many years, and he's too, too smart for traps. He's not going in them. 
another trombocino here because it's vines out. You can tell the, the habit of the plant. It, it vines, 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 vines like this. So there's a bunch more squash, none of which are really producing anything yet. When Woodchuck doesn't care about them, I think this is a couple more of Trombocino here. Then we have all the tomatoes in the last couple of rows. And they're doing well enough also. Uh, because I didn't have the back for weeding, I've been going with something like this between the rows. I haven't implemented it completely. Maybe next year I will. I'll put plastic between each of the rows and it'll look like this. You know, the top will have plastic with holes and then the middle will have just plastic. And around it, the weeds will grow where the weeds will grow. You know, that sort of thing. And I won't be bothering my back by trying to plant stuff. Uh, I mean, pull stuff. So this may be what comes for years ahead here. But even this, just hoeing these rows up is not good for me. I think this is my first cherry tomato. Let's, let's... pick it. And let's try it. Yep, nice and sweet. First one, folks. And you saw it here. Anyway, there will be more. This is the uh, Jerusalem artichoke. In behind there, it's starting to be attacked by Jerusalem artichokes. Is cat mint. Gonna have to pull some of this Jerusalem artichoke stuff out. I haven't pulled much of it out. And then figure out how to cook it. And there's more there. So it's a nice thing to have if you just want something that takes over and you could eat. It'll work. Um, there is some other stuff of note. So let me walk out of the garden. Oh, and as you can see, here's one of those berries. They're blackberries. I think you can see it in there. It's red, but it will get black. I don't know if I can spot any that have turned black here. And that birds didn't get because there's netting over it. But... There's very few of them. I thought I'd do it as an experiment. But I can't see hardly any I can pick. I think I've picked two. So that's pretty much of a waste. I had to try it though, as we gardeners do. Okay, outside the garden here, along this edge of the yard. Um, we have the Concord grapes that have grown in on the trees and brush here. In fact, it's growing up on that stuff there. And because of this alternating water, sun, water, sun that we're having, which is great for a garden, we have a bumper crop. I don't know if you can see them, but there is grapes and more grapes here. They're all hidden by the leaves. You can see a few of them. But they are freaking everywhere in here. Uh, everywhere I will put this aside, there will be bundles of grapes. This year is a big year for grapes because of the water we've gotten. So there are tons of them there. It goes up to here. There's more up here. I think you can probably see them. I'll have to get up to them. But they're up in there. There's just a ton of them. So, should be a banner year for grapes. Here's more <laughs> all around here. And, in fact, it, it, it sprawls out more every year. There's some even out at this point. Um, then there's this apple tree. I didn't get any last year. The year before, I got some. And the year before, I got some, but I didn't do anything with them. Last year was the first year I actually did anything with them because they looked really ugly. However, they tasted great. I just had to peel them, cut out the bad parts, core them, make pieces out of them, and they made great apple pie and great apple crisp. Well, this year there is again, just like the grapes, a crap load all the way up this tree. I don't know if it's even going to show up in this video. Probably need 
I'm going to have it, and I will be putting up four. 4K videos, but it'll be down scalable on YouTube. But that may make them much nicer to look at. I'm getting a new camera shortly here, but yep, all over this little tree, tons of them. And I got a neighbor down the street that his tree is the same way, and he says he doesn't care for them. So I, I could pick his too if I have the time and inspiration to do so. So. These are going to add to a lot of stuff. On the downside, surprisingly, I didn't get any rhubarb worth mentioning. I like to let the plant grow nice and big and then cut the leaves and stuff off, but it, it never made it. It started doing this. You can see what's been happening just by looking at the leaves here. Just kind of wilting and going away and not really making it. So... Not sure what's going on with it or why, but rhubarb, not so good. There's another plant over here. Doesn't get quite as much sun. It's doing some of the same kind of thing, unfortunately. But last year, we had a good amount from both plants. I'll have to read into any treatments I can give them. I honestly am hands-off on these. I, I haven't given them any... Uh, fertilizer, which is probably bad, you know, for me to not be giving them some kind of fertilizer. And then there's the hydrangea bush, which I am trying to figure out. We'll see that in a second, because the remainder of my vegetable garden is out here. These again drooping, but doing well, yielding squash out here, away from the garden. And uh, up here, in pots, I'm going to go up to the deck, because that's where some more is. Safe from the woodchuck, there are Brussels sprouts. Now, that's interesting. Maybe it isn't the woodchuck, because I know he doesn't come up here. And look at this. That's being eaten by something else. It just doesn't look the way that a woodchuck eats. It's got to be some kind of bug or worm, but I'm not seeing it. So, <laughs> it's always something for a gardener, huh? As you can also see, powdery mildew. We had a lot more rain than we should. I was going to get a spray. I went to the garden shop to get it. And the thing, the damn thing says, you got to put it on using gloves because it's caustic chemical. I'm going to put that on my food. I don't think so. I returned it before even opening it or using it. Yep, the other two of these are the same way. And it's strange. I don't see any bugs on them. Maybe they're all, they're all on the underside here. have to look. This is doing okay. The squashes this year, so far, so good. Except for this, this one up here that looks like it's going to I wouldn't be surprised if this succumbs to powdery mildew because all the leaves show it. it I think it's a goner. <laughs> it hasn't succumbed yet, but I think it's going to. And if I don't watch out, these Brussels sprouts are going to do the same thing even without the woodchuck. Uh, I don't know. Well, let's continue down here. Back down. And uh, around to the side here. To pass the air conditioning unit, the facithia, over to the. Oh, there is actually a bloom on this, the hydrangea. One little bloom. We had a couple of others that got cut off, but getting precious little. I'm told I should fertilize this very well from maybe uh, July on out. And then in the spring to in the first couple of months before, like April and May, I got to look into it and find out what sort of things I can do with granular. I got to keep it from growing too big because look at what it's about to keep that from opening up. And I got to, I can't allow that. I'll have to trim it back. The hosta are doing fabulous. I've never had any problems with hosta. 
these are three transplanted chunks from the one I have out front. I forget what this is, and this is dusty. No, this is lamb's ear. Got to get rid of some of that. I forget what this is. It didn't come out too good this year. It, it bloomed, but there were crummy blooms. And this is the... Oh, wow, baby. Look at that one. <laughs> Got to pick that one. This is the uh, squash pot in front. I gotta water all this. And on this, there is two more Trombocino, if they manage to mature to something edible. So, hoping, hoping, crossing fingers multiple times. All right, then there's the other stuff that we have along our walkway here. That's the huge, humongous hosta that'll probably have to be chopped up again next year. It was you know, halfway out over our walkway, so I had to at least take care of that side. Well, it's fixing to do that again, I can tell. And here we have the very cramped and apparently relatively protected. Let's see, do we have this? These actually look completely healthy. So if it was insect, you would think they'd be out here doing the same to these, but no. These are Brussels sprouts growing all well enough and well protected on the screen and the screening material so maybe this is the answer I don't know so far so good on this but they're very very they can't really spread their wings inside of this and once they get far enough up here they'll be able to get more sun for the new growth but that's uh, that's doing much better than the ones on the deck. I can't believe that the deck ones are getting attacked by something. And if it's actually a um, woodchuck that they are getting up there. But they're, they can be fastidious little creatures. Who knows? Maybe they are getting their way up those steps and, and uh, nibbling on the pots in that manner. It, it, it just that didn't look like the type of stuff they do. This was really beautiful, but... Uh, the blooms are pretty much bloomed out on this bush. This is still doing good. Lavender or something? I forget what it is, but it's gorgeous every year when it's blooming. And uh, the final part of this is way out front here, near the near the post box. What you're seeing looming in front of you there is the uh, hibiscus. Not blooming yet, but oh my god, when this gets going, it usually gets going at the end of July and then it goes like fracking crazy with these huge red blooms and each one of these things is a bloom so just in that stem there is probably 10 or 15 blooms and there's I'd say maybe 20 blooms so do the math I'll probably be getting 8 to 10 blooms a day I'll be cutting them putting them inside and everything else we also have Japanese or Chinese lanterns which you can see just growing like crazy. They're weeds, really. They as far because they they replant. They're very invasive. They've t they've taken over this whole area. They're growing. There's more back there. They're fracking everywhere, and Judy will not allow me to touch them, nor will Jonah. So what's a man to do? So they're growing all over the place. <laughs> Uh, yes, they are. They're all over. They're probably the predominant species here at the moment, other than these guys and those annuals and these chicks and hens. The ones in my front walkway have been crowded out by moss, and it's a lot of work to weed the moss out from between them. These were tight enough together, but i got to get the crabgrass off of them. Again, this year I haven't been wonderful because of my back. It weeding and nor if I put down mulch which I normally would have done a long time ago again it's all kind of bending over and stuff and the back just hasn't been having that and I expect this may get worse when years come and I'll be doing less and less of this bending over and weeding stuff I'll show you the chicks and hens stuff going on here that's why if I downsize the house it'll be just less um, temptation to do what I shouldn't do. Yeah, here's a good example of 
invasive species, moss. Note the chicks and hens surrounded by moss every possible place. Just grew in, it's puffing up, and it's surrounding them, it's going to choke them out. See, see them down in there? The chicks and hens are way down in there, the moss is overgrowing them and it's going to choke them right out. Invasive species, moss. <laughs> I should find out if there's something I could spray on this that would kill moss and wouldn't kill chicks and hens. That was a thought I had rather than all the hassle of bending over and uh, trying to pull it out. And then once it's dead, I could probably just scrape it out. I don't know, but... All right, I think that's the lot of it. And I'll put this up. Oops, that was startling. That's my AC unit coming on there. All right. Goodbye until the next one. I'm, there will be another one at least before the end of the season, maybe a couple.